Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to class. We're glad that you're here today. Looking forward to a great day at Community Bible Baptist Church. I'm glad that you're here and you're not up north. A lot of bad things happening up there right now. Uh, my father-in-law is uh, staying at my house right now. My, my uncle and my mom are here. They're all from about the same area, that same uh, longitude up there. And uh, it's 22 below is what the wind factor is, 22 below. Uh, I, Ryan Alfiero said that they canceled school in Chicago because it was so cold. So if Chicago canceled school because of cold, you know it's cold. <laughs> and uh, see, our kids never get that experience. They get hurricane days and things like that down here. But uh, no snow days and no cold days. I don't think I remember school ever canceling because it was cold, but apparently it's very cold up there. So if you think it's cold here, you've never been up north. Because up north, it's very, very cold this morning. Well, we are glad that you're here. Today is a special day. We've got our vision day. And uh, Pastor Stance was back with us and going to be sharing some of his vision for 2015. Hard to believe we're already 11 days into 2015. And January is already ticking away. Time doesn't slow down. It doesn't wait for us. It just keeps going. And uh, looking forward to our study this morning. But uh, let's go ahead and take a few moments. And we'll get our offering taken care of by our two Steves. Uh, Steve Hawthorne and the other Steve. Last week I really couldn't remember his name for some reason. It just left my mind, but Steve Waterman, thank you guys for your service. Everything that comes in the offering goes toward the building fund, and uh, the painting will begin this week. Get things touched up and looking better. Thank you for your faithfulness there. Going to take time for some prayer requests, praises, or if there's something you'd like to share this morning. Um, I give you a prayer request right away, uh, Bo and Kay uh, Bedgood, their daughter, I'd ask that you pray for her. Her name is Terry, and uh, she's got congestive heart failure, and uh, young, but uh, needs the Lord, so I'd ask that you pray for her this morning, specifically, just keep her on your heart and mind. Her name is Terry, I'm not sure on her last name, but it's uh, Bo and Kay's daughter. Anybody else this morning, a prayer request, something that's on your heart? Brother Paul, way in the back. Hollis? Okay, I'm pretty for sure. Next. Brother Drexel? Ooh, it's coming up. Back surgery is very... Yes, ma'am. for sure. Somebody else was holding the hand. Yes, Miss Tina. Brianna. How old is she? Oh, wow. Very young. Baby, yes. Anyone else? Saw some more hands. Yes, Miss Granger. Travel mercy. Are you going far up north? Oh, okay. You're kind of going up and over. There's nothing good in Texas, nothing good in Texas. At least you're not going too far, too far. Yes, Mom. For Regetta. Bridget. Goodness gracious. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, we'll pray for sure. 
Any, any other requests? Way in the back, Mr. Becker. Ms. Antonella, if you notice, there's somebody different at the piano today. Um, this is friends of Jessica Gizmondi. Went to school together, and she came out for our single vision conference and loved the church and loved what the Lord was doing here. And so she's transferring her job from where she is in California to Florida and uh, going to be helping us out on the piano and doing all kinds of stuff. So we praise the Lord for that. Anybody else this morning? Brother Drex. Unspoken. How many of you have an unspoken? You just say, boy, the Lord, there's something heavy on my heart, something I'm dealing with, going through. Lots of hands. Lots of hands. Anyone else that want to cut you off? Any more praises? I'd like to hear praises. That's good. Anybody else traveling in the next few uh, weeks? Any other travelers? Gary's traveling back, driving. You're driving. Going here, going there. The Mortons. My father-in-law, getting ready to travel back up to that 22 below weather. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. <clears throat> I miss seeing the snow, but I don't miss shoveling it, scraping it, and driving on it, slipping on it, <laughs> on any of that stuff. Well, let's go to Lord in prayer, and I'll jump into our lesson. Lord, we do thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you that you hear us and you answer our prayers. And Lord, I just pray that you would be with Brother Paul and his brother, Lord Hollis. Lord, I pray that you would just be with the doctors. And Lord, I think about Jimmy and his back surgery tomorrow, Lord. Just uh, give him peace. And Lord, uh, the Zahn's friend, Lord, uh, I pray that you would just be with her. Difficult times, Lord, in a lot of people's lives as different changes happen in our health. Lord, I think about little baby Brianna, Lord, I pray that you would be with her and just uh, be with the doctors, help everything go smoothly and carefully and uh, that they figure out what's going on without causing any problems. Lord, I pray that you would just be with uh, the Zahn's, uh, or the uh, Ron's uh, daughter, Lord, uh, possible cancer, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, be with her, Lord, I pray that that wouldn't be cancer. I pray that you give her good health. Think about all of these that will be traveling. Lord, it's been good to have my uncle here, but be with him as he travels, father-in-law, mother-in-law, Lord, uh, Carrie and Mark and the kids as they travel back. Lord, lots of people traveling. Thank you for bringing our preacher back safely. Lord, would you think about this Bridget, Bridget Erickson, Lord, I pray that you'd be with her, Lord, just going through a very difficult time, a dark time. And Lord, I pray that that church would just surround her with love. Lord, pray for Diane, Cindy's sister, Lord, pray for uh, uh, her and her situation, Lord, her health. Lord, I pray for the unspokens that are in this room, Lord. Each of us have different things that are on our heart, different things that we worry about. But, Father, help us to cast our care upon you because you care for us. Father, help us to trust that you have a plan and help us to have faith in that. And, Father, just to uh, be patient. And, Father, I pray that you would uh, just, as we finish up Joseph in the next couple of weeks, Father, give us direction for this class. Lord, I want this to be a good year where we grow and we learn. And Father, I pray that you'll be with each one that's here. Father, help us to be constantly looking and searching for people that we can reach and people that we can talk to about you. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of things that I wanted to announce. Uh, Tuesday night visitation has restarted. And this past uh, Tuesday night, we had a good group that came out. So I'd encourage you to start coming to that right away. Uh, beginning of the year, Tuesday night. Um, tonight, you'll hear more about that. I'd encourage you, if you're not normally here on a Sunday night, to be here uh, this Sunday night. It's kind of hard to go to a church where you don't understand the vision of what's going on, and the vision will be cast for 2015 tonight. So I think it's important, uh, if, if you want to be involved, if you want to know what's going on, if you want to catch the vision, it'd be a good, good idea to be here on vision night because that's when it's going to be cast. Uh, so I'd encourage you to be there, be here for our visitation on Tuesday night. Um, basically, if you've never been on visitation, we go out and encourage other people, maybe some of these people that we mentioned, people that are sick, people that aren't doing well, we go see them. Also, somebody uh, put this on my pulpit, just praying for our missionaries. I would encourage you to just continue to keep our missionaries in prayer. Um, it's difficult being away from family, but we're in the same country, we're still in America. Um, but these people are away from everything they know, different language, uh, different culture, different everything. And I have to ask that you pray for our missionaries. 
It was so good to have the Boyle's uh, son here and to hear about their church and what God's doing up there. Uh, there's a lot of good things happening, but if we're not careful, Satan comes in and he discourages us, so we need to encourage one another and uh, move forward. Genesis in your Bible this morning. We'll start at Genesis chapter number 41. We'll be moving around a little bit in Genesis. The last time we met, we talked about Joseph. We talked about the fact that... Um, he went from the prison house, and now he's in uh, Pharaoh's house, and uh, he's interpreted the dream, and uh, Pharaoh has put him in charge of everything, except uh, when he's in the throne is the only time that uh, Joseph doesn't have the same power that uh, Pharaoh does, and Joseph has basically uh, changed his position in life quite a bit. He went from being a prisoner for over uh, 10 years to now being the prince of Egypt being right under Pharaoh. And uh, his, uh, he's got position now, and he's got possessions, and he's got power, and he's got property, and he's now the prince. And uh, we see that these are all things that are Joseph's burden. Because with success sometimes, uh, when there's success in our lives, we've got to be careful that pride doesn't sneak in. You think about all the places that he's been, and now he's got the position, and he's got the possession, and he's got this we got to be careful that pride doesn't sneak in. It's part of Joseph's burden. And, um, and then we saw Joseph's bride. He gets married, and then we see his blessing. And we'll read this again just because it's worth noting again. Genesis 41, verses 50 and 52. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine came, which Asna, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, he, he hath made me forget all my toil in all my father's house. And the name of the second was called Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And we talked for just a moment as we were closing last, uh, the last time that we uh, met and talked about Joseph. We talked about the fact that God has brought Joseph to a very important place in his life. When injustice happened to us and when we've been falsely accused or when we've been hurt, uh, it's very difficult for us to forget that. In fact, I've been talking to people before in the past and I'll say, you know, we can forgive and forget. But their biggest thing would be to say, you can forgive, but you cannot forget. But Joseph reached a point in his life where he realized that forgiveness means remembering without the pain. Forgiveness is when you remember without the pain. Boy, maybe the Lord took somebody that you love. Maybe the Lord just uh, moved you in a state that you didn't want to go to. Maybe the Lord's just done some things in your life, in your health, and you get to the point where you can even get angry at God. And uh, forgiveness is when you can remember without the pain. I think the names of his son are very important because it tells us where Joseph has come. Joseph has not only just, uh, he's grown so much culturally because this is a whole new culture, this is a whole new atmosphere, this is away from his family, away from everything that he knows, but he's grown very much spiritually. He names his second son, and the name of his second son means, God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Over and over as you read the story of Joseph, this wasn't easy for Joseph. This was very difficult for Joseph. He had the same feelings. He is the same human that you and I are. And to be ripped away from family and to have, have your own brother sell you and to be sold as a slave twice now and then, and then to be falsely accused and said that you were immoral when you're trying to be as moral as you possibly can. All of this stuff has happened to him. It's a very difficult thing. But God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what difficulty you're going through, but you can be fruitful in your trouble. You can be fruitful in your affliction. You can be fruitful in your trial if you'll just continue to do what you know that you're supposed to do. He has his sons, and now the famine has come, and they begin to gather wheat. They begin to gather grain. They begin to gather corn, and they gather so much that they do not know how to number it. They lose count of how much they have. In the Genesis chapter number 41, we'll begin reading 
In Genesis chapter number 41, we're going to read a couple of verses that I think will be a help to you. Let's actually start in Genesis 42. We'll read verses 1 through 10. Now when Jacob saw that there was, there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look upon one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get ye down thither, and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob, sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest preadventure mischief, mischief befall him. And the son of Israel, and the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, for the famine was great in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed themselves down before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but he made himself strange unto them, and he spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them. And he said unto them, Ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. We are all, we are all one man's son. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. We see everything come full circle here, and uh, I think that Joseph is reminded of some things here as he, he gets up each and every day, and the famine is bad in the land now, and everybody's to the point where they're out of food, and they're all coming to Egypt to get their food. And Joseph's job, literally, every day, he gets up, and he meets with people from all over the country that are coming who are literally starving. And he meets with people, and he finds out who they are, and he finds out where they're coming from, and, he, and he's able to sell them corn because of all of the corn that's in the land. And he gets up each and every day, and that's all he does. How many people do I see today? Well, today you have 150 people that have traveled from all over the country who are coming to Egypt for food. And all he did each and every day, the Bible is very clear about it, he talked to them and sold them food. Well, he wakes up one day and has no idea that on that 150 people that he's got to meet with, there's going to be one group that's very familiar to him. And he gets up and he continues to do what he knows he's supposed to do. And he, he comes out and the next group is brought before him and there's 10 of them. And I don't know if you've ever seen somebody, maybe there's somebody that you've seen that you haven't seen in about 10 or 13 years. And you see him, you still recognize him. Man, they look a little bit different. They may look a little older. They may look a little thinner. They may look a little fatter, wiser, whatever. He knew exactly who they were. I think about my Uncle Gary. I probably haven't seen him over a decade. It's been a long time. He looks the same. Looks a little skinnier. He's like, he looks a little bigger. <laughs> Joseph knew exactly who these guys were. But the Bible says it twice. These guys had no idea this was Joseph. I believe that, number one, he was very young when he left. 17 years of age. Now he's 30. I believe that the culture uh, had changed him. I believe that prison changes you. Had years in prison. I believe that there's a lot of things that had changed about him. And Joseph stands before him. The Bible says that he, he deals harshly with them. Almost on purpose, he wants them to not figure out who he is. But these guys, they had no idea. They didn't even ever dream that this would be their brother who's standing before him. I wanted to show you just a few things from our passage today. Number one, uh, we'll notice some things. The full circle of sin. The full circle of sin. Sin has a circle, and it comes right back around. And uh, we think about what the brothers did, and now we see what's taking place here. And I love what happens in our text. Joseph remembers some things that he's probably forgot. you got to remember, it's been 13 years. And I believe for a while there, he was like, boy, those dreams. Those are just strange dreams. 
But just like we do, we just tend to forget things after a while. Man, he's been to Potiphar's house, and he's been falsely accused, and he's been thrown into prison, and he's been, he's been now he's in Pharaoh's house, and each and every day for seven years, all he did was try to figure out how to gather as much grain, and now for, uh, for a period of time, all he's done is try to ration it out to save people. Uh, his life has become so busy that I believe when he saw his brothers, he's like, whoa. He thought about those dreams when he was 17 years of age and how everything has come full circle. There are 13 recorded famines in the Bible and God was about to use the resources to bring a spiritual feast in Egypt. In Egypt, the Nile had failed. Egypt had failed for seven years. All of Egypt rejoiced that the Nile had been full. You think about the seven years of plenty. Man, if you've ever just had a good year and it just seems like God blessed and you have spiritual fruit and you have physical fruit and you have all of this stuff that God has done for you. It's just a great time. Well, those days are now gone. Those years of plenty. Understand that this wasn't just years of plenty for, for Egypt. This was years of plenty for everybody. This wasn't just for Pharaoh. Everybody had plenty. Now we see a drastic change. The years of famine have begun. The Nile has failed to rise. The life-giving nutrient flood that uh, was used so powerfully is absent. Number one, I want you to see this morning, denial and deception. From verse number 11 in our text, the men, these uh, brothers are standing before Joseph. And I, love, I think it's interesting how they describe themselves. We are all one man's son. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. Joseph had accused them of being spies. And he's doing all of this for a purpose. He's doing all of this. He has a plan. As soon as he sees them, he wants to see if there's been any change in them. Is there anything different about these guys? He calls them spies, and they, they, they start immediately to get scared because they understand the power of the person that they're standing in front of. And they say, oh, no, 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 we're not. We're, we're all a family. We're all one man's son. We are true men. Now think about who they're telling this to. When they said we are true men, you know what they're basically saying? We are good guys. We're the good guys. We're just from one family. We're not spies. Spies would be all collaborating together from different places and coming here with a purpose. Oh no, we're from one family. And we're the good guys. We're true men. Can you imagine what Joseph's thinking as he's listening to these guys? This is all through an interpreter. Oh, we're the good guys. He's thinking, oh, yeah, sure you are. Man, he's looking at their faces, and he's thinking about all the stuff that they did. Remember the evil reports that he would take to his father because of his brothers and what they were doing. Um, when you think about his brothers, the words like hate and jealousy and liar, anger, murder, or rape, these are all things not all of his brothers did, but these were all things that they were involved with. We're the good guys. We only speak truth. Think about what that says. We are true men. Joseph's probably imagining the lies that they told their father about his disappearance and how they made a pact to conceal the fact that they sold their own brother into slavery. You know, if we're not careful, we start to look at our lives and we think that we're the good guys. We think that we're, the, we're, we're okay. Joseph's brothers need an opportunity to face themselves for who they really were. So Joseph presses them a little bit more. And uh, he continues to, uh, to ask them about themselves. If we're not careful, we get to the point where we say, I'm doing really good. Spiritually, I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing everything that I know how. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter number 20 and verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. You ever find somebody who just likes to talk about how good they are and how much they've done? Man, it just gets old to listen to, you know. You're, oh, that's great, that's great. We need to remember who we really are. We need to make sure that we're not painting an inaccurate picture. We need to keep keep a real look at who we are. We're a sinner who's unworthy, 
who is lost until he found us, desperate and bound for hell until he found us, mercifully saved from my sins because he found us, ambassador for Jesus Christ. That's who we are. We've got to make sure that we get to the point where we're not like Joseph's brothers, where we feel like we're better than other people, or we feel like we're the good guys. We need to remember who we are. Romans chapter number 12 and verse 3 says this, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. I hope that you understand that all of us, from the preacher to the pew to the prisoner, if you've been saved, there's nothing good about us. It's the one who saved us. It's the one who gives us that grace and that mercy. Grace and mercy is getting things that we do not deserve. All of us deserve one thing, and that's to spend eternity in hell. If it wasn't for Jesus and His mercy and His grace, that's what we deserve. I think it's interesting that his brother said, we are true men. We're the good guys. They had no idea who they were talking to. They were talking to the guy that knew them better than anybody else. And can I tell you this, that when we come to church on a weekly basis and we put on our suit and we grab our Bible, that we're coming and we're worshiping the one who knows us better than anyone else. We need to remember who we are. We see the denial and deception. But secondly, we see remembering and remorse. Joseph's brothers have been trying to successfully deny their past. But Joseph begins to stir their remembrance once more. Look at Genesis 42, verse number 13. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. One is not. The Bible talks about Enoch and says that he was not. And to say that somebody is not, when the, when the Bible said that Enoch walked with God and Enoch was not, um, it means that nobody knows what happened to him. And so what their brothers are saying right here is they're saying that Benjamin is with dad and one, we're not sure what happened to him. Right there, they just said we're true men. And then in the next verse, they, they tell him that we have no idea where the other is. He's standing in front of them. They do not name him further. They didn't, do not acknowledge him. In fact, they would prefer not to think of him, yet they know they were forced to remember him. I think it's interesting that God does stuff in our life. He uses scripture. He uses a sermon. He uses a song. He uses something to get us to remember things in our life, things that maybe we haven't taken care of things maybe there's a a root of bitterness maybe there's something that's happened in our life you think about this this has been 13 years uh since joseph uh, since they sold joseph and his brothers are forced again to remember this now i believe over the 13 years that there's been a lot of thought about joseph and they try to forget that they try to forget what they did but i don't believe that uh this has been an easy road for the brothers I think it's been a difficult thing. I think it's been difficult to watch them uh, watch their dad and see how this has affected their dad. And as they get older and their, their wildlife and their crazy times and their, their jealousy and their hatred and all of that mellows out, man, they see their dad and they see someone who's just broken. They see someone who had the love for Joseph and all of that be taken away. And I think this has been a difficult time for the brothers, and I think it's been a hard thing. And uh, that Joseph just stirs this back up on purpose. And then he goes further in verse number 17 through 23. And he put them all together in the ward three days. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, he uses their words, Let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses. But bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, 
we are very guilty concerning our brother and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered and said, saying, Speak I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them. He spake unto them by interpreter. Kind of an interesting passage of scripture here. Joseph uh, Joseph puts him into prison. He's got him there for three days. And he comes to him. He says, look, I need to find out if you're spies or not. You've told me that you have a younger brother. To prove that you're not spies, I want you to go home. Uh, leave one of your brothers here. And go home and get Benjamin, your youngest. And I want you to bring him here because I want to make sure that you're not spies. And these guys at this point, they understand that this isn't normal. They've been watching group after group go in, come out with corn. Go in, come out with corn. And they go in, and man, this has become an event. Man, they're in prison for three days, and they're being called spies. And they get to the point where they say, we are being judged by God because of what we did to Joseph. And they're speaking out loud. They're not just thinking this. Man, I can imagine these ten guys, they're just like, they're, they're having a difficult time, man. They're starting to think they're going to die. They're starting to think that uh, this, this prince of Egypt, for whatever reason, has their number. And they're not getting out of this easily. And um, they're scared. They're a little worried. And they start to think about what happened 13 years ago. Joseph already stirred that up in their memory. But now it's just, they're, they're talking about it out loud. And Joseph's listening. Joseph listens, and I think it's interesting this is the only place in the Bible where it tells us a little bit about that moment when they sold him. It says that he besought us. He begged us not to do it. Man, can you imagine that moment? And the Bible says that they did not even hear him. Their hatred, their anger, their bitterness, the jealousy was so strong they did not even hear him. Reuben's quick to speak up. Man, I told you guys, this is all your fault. Man, they're all there in the prison. He's like, this is your fault. I want to remind you that I said not to do anything to that boy. And Joseph's listening. That'd be an interesting moment to watch. I think in heaven that we're going to all have this, this is going to be a big old massive HD screen, and we're going to get to re-see all of this. All right, tonight we're watching a rerun on Joseph. Tonight is his brothers in the full circle, and this is when it's all going to happen. Can you imagine what's going on in Joseph's heart as he sees these ten guys that he knew? We see a remembering and a remorse. They knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by interpreter. Numbers chapter number 32, verse 23 says this, Be sure your sin will find you out. Everything comes full circle. Everything comes full circle. This took 13 years. I don't know how long it'll take for you. But the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. We've got to make sure that uh, we're living a life that pleases God. We've got to make sure that we're not doing things that are going to come back around and that are going to hurt us in our testimony and hurt us in our spiritual life. This does not always mean your sin will be revealed, but it does always mean your sin will find you out. The Bible says that Joseph yearned after his brethren. You remember that Joseph is to the point where he remembers without pain. He's completely forgiven. He completely sees it now. He sees what God was doing. And as a boy, a 17-year-old boy, where he's begging not to be sold, he had no idea what God was going to do 13 years down the road. But God has brought all of this. And remember, Joseph has completely forgiven him because he gets it. He understands that if none of this would have happened, they all would have died. The brothers talk about it and they decide Joseph keeps Simeon in prison. I think it's interesting that they chose Simeon. Simeon was probably the worst of the brethren. In fact, uh, Jacob, when he's about to die, he blesses all of his sons and he says something about each of his sons. 
And the only thing that he says about Simeon was he was an instrument of cruelty. A good guy. He was one of the good guys. An instrument of cruelty. Simeon stays behind and he's in prison. Verses number 42, 20, or chapter 42, 26 through 28, we see a little bit more of what happens next. The brothers are getting ready to go, and they're going to go back, and they're going to tell their dad what's going on. Simeon's staying behind in an Egyptian prison. In verse number 26, they laded their asses with corn and departed thence. And as one of them opened their sack to give the ass provender in the end, he espised his money, for behold, it was in the sack of his mouth. And his brethren... And, and he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God hath done unto us? I think it's interesting what they say here. They, they're getting ready to go, and Joseph has his men uh, give them a bunch of corn, and they pay for the corn, but somehow his, his men put the money back in the sacks. And uh, they don't find out until after they've already traveled, and they stay at an inn. And uh, they, go to, uh, they go to pay uh, the inn, and they see that all their money is back. Every one of them, their money has been restored, and their corn's here. So now they're thinking that Joseph, this guy already thinks, or this prince of Egypt already thinks that we're spies. This prince of Egypt's already got it out for us. This prince of Egypt is already holding one of our brothers until we bring another brother because he doesn't believe us. And now he's going to think that we stole all of this corn. They're having a difficult time, and I think it's interesting what they say. What is this that God had done unto us? Can I tell you that when you have difficult times in your life, that we ought not blame God? Immediately they say, what is God, what is it that God has done to us? What is God doing to us? God wants to work through your life, and He often does it through trials, and He often does it through the most difficult time of your life. But God is still good. And God still has a plan. And God still wants to use that plan. And through that trial, do great things in your life. They return home. Chapter number 43, verses 8 through 9. And Judah said unto Israel, his father, Send the lad with me. They're home now. The food has run out. All the corn that they bought in Egypt, they stayed as long as they possibly could. Poor Simeon, he's rotting away in an Egyptian prison. But they're scared to go back because all the money's there. All the corn's there. He already thinks we're spies. But they have children. They have wives. They have their father and their mother. And Israel calls them all together and says, you've got to go back. And all you've got to do is take more money with you. Give them the money back and then buy more corn. And uh, there's one more thing that they need to take back, and that's Benjamin. And, and Israel doesn't want to do it. But Judah goes to him, and Judah says in verse number 8 of Genesis 43, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die. Dad, if, if we don't do this, we're all going to die. If we don't make this decision, all of us will die. Both we and thou and also our little ones. So he pulled on the strings there because he's like, your grandkids are going to die. Come on. It's about the grandkids. Verse number 9 tells us a lot about where these brothers have come around to and how much they've changed. I will be surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee and set him before thee, let me bear the blame forever. Judah says, this is all on me. If we take Benjamin, I'll put my life on it that I'll bring him back. Joseph wants to see what's going to take place. He wants to see if his brothers have changed at all. Remember that Benjamin was a favorite as well. Benjamin came from the favorite wife. Benjamin was Joseph's real brother. And Benjamin was the youngest. And as he sees his brothers and he sees them before him and he puts them in jail and he listens to their conversation and he, they have no idea that he's listening and that he understands everything that's going on. Everything's been a setup. But it's to find out where these brothers really are. 
God does things in our lives that we don't always understand. He does things that we don't like. He does things that we wish that we wouldn't have to go through. He puts people in our lives that drive us absolutely crazy. Drive us nuts. But every person, every situation, everything that he has in your life right now, he wants to use it for your good. Favorite line in the whole story of Joseph, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Do you understand that the things that happen to you on a daily basis, there are people that mean it for evil, but God can take it and change it to good? You think about everything that's happening with Joseph so far, and you think about uh, Isaac and, or uh, Israel and how he doesn't want to let Benjamin go, and uh, he feels like if Benjamin goes, he's going to die. And if Benjamin goes and he dies, that it's going to kill him. And he has no idea that God is working all things out for their good. And that very soon he'll be re reunited with a boy that he thought died when he was 17 years of age. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. Father, help us to trust you. Help us put our faith in you that you do have a plan. And though we have hurts and though we have misjustice and though we have difficult things that come up in our lives, that, Father, if we'll just rest, if we'll just wait, if we'll just put our trust and our faith in you and allow you to guide our steps, that you will guide our steps and that you have a plan for us that's greater than we can devise for ourselves. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're out right on time. You are dismissed. Thank you for being here. God bless you.
In my own strength, I am so weak. Nothing I do will last. But with power from you.